progressive yoga series. Last week, we spoke of Sukhasana, which is the first seated position of yoga. And today, we're going to focus on Siddhasana. So Siddhasana is known as the adept's pose. And it's a very grounding position to sit in, as you have a more stable base than you do actually in Sukhasana. So what you can do is first from your Sukhasana position this way, your knees will naturally be higher, which is why it's helpful to have that little bit of elevation from either a pillow or a cushion or a blanket, as I've mentioned. And then what you want to think of is first just taking your hand to your foot and your hand to your knee. And this can be your right or your left and rock from side to side just to loosen the hip. And then you can release that down and take the opposite foot, take again your hand to your knee, rock from side to side. And now place either your right or your left foot and see if you can just guide your ankle to rest on the other. Now, if the outer hip is tight, you'll likely notice that the knee draws up. In which case, the same as the Sukhasana, you can simply take a prop, scooch it underneath, and elevate your hips so that your hips are higher than your knees. And your knee will begin to naturally fall towards the floor. And if you find still that the knee is drawing up, you can always take a block and support your knee with a prop. Again, this is a much more stable base and you will find that in this position, you'll be able to relax and to focus on your breath with more ease. If you find that one side doesn't feel particularly comfortable, just switch it up and try the other because generally one side does feel more comfortable to sit. And then bring your shoulders up towards your ears, take a deep inhale through your nose and a long cleansing breath out your mouth. Now placing your thumb and your index finger to touch, Draw your other three fingers in towards each other. So last week, we did chin mudra, keeping the palms facing up. So this week, we're gonna have our palms facing down in yan mudra. And just lift up through the crown of the head, draw your navel in towards your spine, and keep your chin, as I mentioned last week, parallel to the floor. This will help for you to maintain an upright position. And now simply begin to notice your breath. You don't have to alter the breath in any way right now. And as you do this, become aware of whether your inhale or exhale is longer. And now count the length of the inhale and count the length of the exhale. Now, whichever is the shorter breath length, you're going to inhale and exhale for that same breath length. So we did the yogic breath last week. And this week, this pranayama is known as samavriti and it's simply matching the inhale and the exhale with an equal breath length. We're going to do this for six breaths. So inhaling through your nose and just count what that breath length is for you. And then exhaling through the nose for that same breath length. And again, inhale through the nose. and exhale through the nose. And just again, ensure that both the inhale and the exhale are matched. And continue this way, inhaling through the nose, counting the breath length in your mind, exhaling through the nose, and again, keep counting that same breath length and then continuing. And try to keep the inhale and the exhale through the nose as opposed to out the mouth.
And then once you come to the next one, after your exhale, bring your hands together at your heart center. And take a deep inhale through the nose, another cleansing breath. Exhaling out the mouth. So now from here, we're going to come forward onto our hands and knees. And when you come onto your hands and knees, you may wish to have the blocks with you on either side. So once you come onto your hands and knees, we're going to just move through the cat pal that we did last week. This is a wonderful way to warm up your spine. So you're going to press the heels of your hands into the mat, round your back, draw your navel up towards your spine. And then simply release, bring your sit bones upwards and pull your heart forward and through. Try to always keep your arms straight and strong as you're doing this. So just watch for this tendency to want to bend the elbows. Keep the arms straight and think of pulling your heart forward and through. And again, rounding in. And as you're doing this, try to begin to think of synchronizing your breath with the movement. So the same as your sum of BT, rounding in. You can count that breath length. And then beginning to release and counting that breath length. Then come back to a neutral spine. Again, if you have the blocks, you can use the blocks. You can take your right foot forward. So now from here, we bring our arms up. And last week, we rotated the torso this way. I want you to still be thinking this, but with your hands together at your heart. Now you're going to take your elbow to the outside of your right knee, and we're going to draw the right shoulder back. And as you're drawing the right shoulder back, keep pressing the heels of your hands into each other. And that way, you're going to find a little more rotation. Good. Now you're welcome to stay here, or you can lift your back knee and push out through your heel. Now you're going to find it will challenge your balance, so you want to ensure that your knee and your ankle and your knee and your hip are in one line. Now from here, you can bring your knee back down, take your hands onto your blocks, lift your back knee again, and now we're going to start to draw the right hip crease back. Now keep your left heel lifted up away from the mat and try to think lengthen the spine. If your hamstrings are particularly tight, you may wish to have a bend in your knee. And then just keep breathing here into the stretch for your hamstrings. Of course, you can always change the height of the block as well. Try to also think of having the torso coming towards the thigh. And again, drawing up through the hip crease, keeping both of the hips square. Again, you can change the height of the blocks, but keep the back heel lifted. And breathe in here. And if you'd like to begin to fold in, you can do that as well. Really just depends again on how tight the hamstrings are. And stay with it, two more breaths. Think your inhale. Again, is the same length as the exhale. And with each inhale, you're finding a little more space in the body. And then with each exhale, you're softening and relaxing into that space. Okay, now from here, we're going to lift the right foot away from the mat. And as you lift the right foot, you're going to feel the stretch move into your calf. So you can remain here. Again, you can be without the blocks if you prefer. You can be on your fingertips. You can come onto your palms. But continue to draw back from the hip crease and stay with the breath. And one more. Okay, now you're going to bring your foot down. Bend back into your knee. You can either bring your knee down or you can keep your knee up. And we're going to now rotate the torso, reaching the right arm up. And as you do this, try to extend up through your fingertips. 
Continue to draw the right shoulder back. Again, you're welcome to use the blocks. And now bring your arm back down and again, draw your knee down. Now from here, we're gonna keep the hip and the knee of the left leg over top of each other. So just watch for this tendency to want to draw back towards the heel. You're just gonna keep here. Now we're gonna again, come back into getting a stretch here for the hamstrings by walking the right foot a little further away. Now as you're walking the right foot away, you can start to draw back, but again, watch with bringing the hips towards the heel and then keep pushing the heel further and further away from you. Then you can use your blocks to either walk your hands closer towards your foot, or of course, you can change the height of the blocks for the depth. And then breathe in here, inhale, and exhale. And just keep drawing forward with the heart. Good. And listen for the sound of your breath as you're doing this. And listening for the sound of the breath will help to allow you to stay present in your body as opposed to the mind drifting. And one more here. Okay, now you're going to pull your heel towards you. So again, you can take your blocks and just pull the heel towards you. Now you're going to bend into your knee. This can create considerable amount of pressure in the back knee when you come into Anjaniyasana. So what's helpful is to take your back knee slightly back and then pull your quad forward and then you won't be directly on your kneecap. Then toes tucked or untucked. If as you start to come up, you feel slightly unstable in the hips, tuck the toes as it will give a more solid foundation for you. Otherwise, you wanna be thinking here with your pelvis of drawing forward. Now, the moment you draw forward with the pelvis, you're gonna feel the quad begin to engage. Then it's up to you again, you can either have your fingers on the block, drawing the heart up, you can interlace your fingers, and press your palms into your knee and lift. And you're gonna feel now a nice stretch for both the hip flexor and the quad. So breathing here, if you prefer to draw your arms up, then you can most certainly do this as well. And just keep reaching back, lifting the heart, or remain again with your fingers interlaced. And then stay with the breath. The inhale is the length. And the exhale, is the depth. And three more. Good. One more. Okay. Now pull the hip towards, bring your hands down, guide your knees slightly forward, and keep your toes tucked. Now you're gonna take your blocks to the inside of your leg and you can walk your foot slightly over to the side. And as you can see, there's a square between the legs. So watch that the back knee isn't too far back. Now from here, walk your hands over to about a 45 degree angle, but without the hip coming out to the side, you wanna keep your knee and your hip crease in one line and your knee and your ankle. Now from here, you're gonna allow your torso to start to come down towards the ground. You can again change the height of the blocks. You can place your forearms on the blocks or you can come further down. The further you come down towards the mat, the more intense the stretch is gonna be into the hip. So just slowly feel your way into it. And again, use the breath as a way to deepen. So that the inhale again is creating the space in the body and the exhale is the release and the depth. And as you bring the torso closer towards the mat, try to still think of pressing away from the mat. So we're not collapsing down, we're lifting up against gravity. 
And that way you're going to feel also a deeper stretch. And two more breaths here. Just keep again the breath nice and even and steady. And now from here, slowly begin to make your way up. You're going to take your left foot and bring it over to the right side of your mat. Now walk your hands back and let your right leg draw forward and across. Now you can be in this position or as you did at the very beginning of taking your hand to your foot and your hand to your knee and just rocking, you can begin to gently guide your knee across. Now you may find that the knees come to stack, but you may find that they don't as well, and that's perfectly fine. If this is uncomfortable for the hip, you can always come to your Sukhasana position, again, propping yourself up, or you can return to your Siddhasana as well. And we're gonna focus into the shoulders. If you stay in this position, you're gonna also get, of course, the stretch for the hip. But don't force the body into positions. Just ease your way in and see what's most appropriate for you today. So right leg is drawn up, so the right arm is gonna come up. We're gonna bring the hand down the back and now you can either take your hand to your elbow or as we did last session, taking your hand either to your sacrum, bringing your elbow by your side body or bringing your fingers towards each other to touch. If you have a strap, you're welcome to use the strap, but try to focus on maintaining length in the spine. Because as you're here, if you start to round the back, there's more distance for the hands to cover and it's more likely that they'll pull away from each other. So think instead of maintaining that same length that you had in your seated position, letting the left shoulder draw down and the right elbow lift up towards your ceiling. And then keep the muscles of the face soft and relaxed, the jaw loose. Continue to stay with the breath. Inhaling deeply, exhaling slowly and completely. And just one more breath here. Okay, now, once you release, you're going to take your left arm, cross it over, take your right hand just below your left elbow, and then let the left shoulder relax down. Now release, bring your hands forward, and you're gonna come back onto your hands and knees. So again, having the blocks, step now the left foot forward, and then here you can be either again in your low lunge, or you could be in your high lunge, but you're gonna reach your arms up, rotate again the torso, bring your hands together at your heart, and right elbow is coming to the outside of the left knee. And then press the heels of the hands and draw the left shoulder back. Now again, you can remain here or you're gonna lift your back knee. In order to stay stable here, the knee and the ankle and the knee and the hip need to remain in one line. And then as you continue to push the heels of the hands, you're gonna draw the shoulder back. Okay. On your next exhale, come back to center, bring your hands down. Start to now draw the left hip crease back. Keep lifted up through your right heel. Breathing here. Once more, you can change the height of the blocks. Try to ensure though that both of your hips here are parallel to your mat. So you might notice this tendency of one hip wanting to lift up higher than the other. So just ensure that they're both square. And then from here, you can always take your hand and just place it to your sacrum. And if you feel that something that could potentially roll off, such as a tennis ball, would stay stable, then you know that the hips are square. If though, you can feel with your hand that it would roll off, 
you need to draw the left hip crease back to square the hips. And then just stay with it. Keep finding length of drawing forward, pulling back from the hip crease. Again, you can fold in as well or keep a bend in your knee. And then from here, we're gonna lift again the foot. So lifting now the left foot, getting into the stretch here for your calf. And breathe into the stretch. And again, with each breath, you may find that there's a little more depth available to you. Good. Now bring your foot down, bend your knee. From here, it's now going to be your right hand coming onto the mat. So it could be your fingertips. You can use the block at any height. And you're just going to press into the block and now reach the left arm up or again onto the mat and reaching the arm up. Good. Now bring your arm down. Bring your knee down. And from here, reach your arms up. Now we're going to do in reverse here. So you're going to take your hands and again, start to think, keeping the hip drawn up and beginning to guide yourself in. Now, as you're beginning to guide yourself in, maybe here you have the blocks. Maybe again, you come onto your forearms and you're going to breathe into this stretch for the left hip. And continue to listen for the sound of your breath. Okay, on your next inhale, slowly begin to come up. Now from here, you're going to take your foot, draw your knee slightly back. And again, toes can be tucked or untucked. Taking your hands to either your blocks on either side of your foot and start to now pull the quad forward and lift the heart. So here's your Anjani Asana. Interlacing the fingers, pressing against the leg, lifting the heart. Or again, reaching your arms up. Bending deeply into your knee and reaching back. And continue to bend deeply so that again, you really feel the stretch here into the hip flexor, your quad. Let the shoulders relax down. And stay with the breath. Two more. Last one. Great, now start to draw the hip back. And again, you can tuck your toes. Now from here, we're gonna again, keep the hip and the knee in one line. Begin to walk the left foot a little further, see how that feels. Walk the left foot a little further, see how that feels. And you can start to push your heel further and further away. And then again, come to the depth that feels most appropriate for you right now. And then breathing into that. Good, stay with it for two more breaths. Again, each inhale is going to create more space in the body that allows us to go deeper into the pose with the exhale. This is your Hanuman prep, your monkey pose prep. And use your next inhale to guide yourself back up. 
Now we're gonna take here as we pull the heel towards, the right foot is gonna come over to the left side of the mat. You're gonna to begin to walk your hands back. And now think about taking your hand to your knee, hand to your foot, rocking from side to side. And now crossing the knee over. As you cross the knee over, think about bringing the heel a little closer towards the body. Or again, come into your Sukhasana or Siddhasana and use the blanket as you need. The same with the strap. Otherwise, drawing now the left arm up, left hand down, right hand to the left elbow, remaining here, or hand to the sacrum, elbow by the side body. This is really key to keep the elbow by the side body. Because as you're here, you can start to roll the shoulder back, which is gonna allow the hands to come towards each other and then to touch. And then stay lifted again through the crown of the head, root down through the base of the spine. Maintain the length in the spine as you breathe here. Two more breaths here. The last one. And now release, cross the right arm over. Take your left hand again, just below your elbow and focus on letting the shoulder drop. Now as the shoulder drops, the arm comes closer towards your chest. Again, the deeper the stretch will be. Great, now release, bring your hands beside you, take your feet to the edge of your mat and just windshield wiper from side to side. Okay. Now cross your ankles and guide yourself forward onto your knees. And bringing your knees together, this is our last asana. This is your hero's pose, Virasana. And from this position, we can draw ourselves into Balasana, child's pose. Last week, we had wide knees for child's pose. This one, knees are together. We're gonna to draw back at the hip crease and opposed to bringing the arms out, we're gonna bring the arms back. Now let your shoulders completely relax. And if you find that it's not comfortable for your head, again, you can just use a block, place your forehead on a block, or you may find too that the hips draw up away from the heels. That's fine. As the body continues to open, it'll come closer towards the heels. So just let yourself fold in here. Feel a sense of surrender, of ease. And now draw back with the fingertips. Draw your shoulder blades towards each other. Interlace your fingers. Reach your wrists back and draw your arms up away from your low back. Now, as you do this, try to do this progressively. You're reaching back with the wrists, you're bringing your shoulder blades towards each other, then you're drawing the arms up away from the low back. Then you're gonna continue that as you're in the pose. You're gonna reach back, bring again the shoulder blades towards each other, and draw the arms up. And continue this way. Bring the arms a little further, a little further. And stay for one more breath. And then slowly exhale, bring your hands down and guide yourself up. Now making little circles with your shoulders. Going in one direction. And then going in the other direction. And then bring your shoulders back up towards your ears. Take a deep inhale. A cleansing breath again out your mouth. Let your shoulders drop. Bring your hands together at your heart. The light within me honors the light within you. Thank you so much for joining me for today's session for the second week of our six-week progressive yoga series. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next week. Namaste.